Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto learns to bend like fan avatar. At a young age, Naruto is sent from his world to the world of the avatar and thanks to a certain blind girl, he will gain a new family. Not only that, he will learn what really happened to him and learn to bend with the avatar. Find out here. Welcome aboard. Chapter 1. A five-year-old Naruto Uzumaki ran for his life as he was being chased by an angry mob of civilians and ninja. Why is this you ask? Well, every year on his birthday, which is the Kyuubi festival, the said people go on a fox hunt, only the blonde is the fox. Panicked, Naruto ran faster than his five-year-old legs could take him. He didn't understand it. He was nothing but nice to these people, yet they always glare at him and on his birthday, they try and kill him. Up above, a figure of the past watched sadly as one of his descendants was treated in such a way. If this boy had received his bloodline, he was sure this boy would have been treated as a hero as he should have been for jailing one of the beasts that he had split from the ten tails. Unfortunately, another Uzumaki by the name of Nagato had his bloodline and it only activated if there is not another Rinnegan user around. The spirit of the Sage of Six Paths narrowed his eyes at one of the ninja who had brought out a Tonto. He knew that this time that these people were serious. He had to stop them somehow. He smiled sadly, this would drain his spirit form for a long time, but it will be worth it. He dropped down in front of the young boy in a protective stance, but all the humans could see was the ghostly figure of the old sage. He brought up his hands to both sides and said two words that were silent to the people watching. That set off something that blew away everything and knocked the blonde's attackers far away. Most of the nearby buildings had been reduced to rumble as well. The spirit turned to a wide-eyed Naruto and he could hear what was said. You have endured much, so I shall take you away from here to live a happy life. Wait. Who are you? Naruto asked. Just someone from the past. The figure said as he helps out a hand and Naruto started to disappear. Naruto stared at his hand as it began to be transparent just as the Hokage and his ANBU appeared. When the blonde looked up, he saw them and he disappeared. The old man stared in shock before his gaze switched from the spot Naruto had recently been into the familiar sight of the transparent sage. W what are you doing here? Helping a child in need. The figure of the sage said before it disappeared as well. Sir, what the heck happened? Asked one of the ANBU. Old man Saratobi sighed as he said, I failed, that's what happened. Naruto suddenly appeared on the path to a large city in the distance. Luckily, he appeared when no one was around, so right now he was safe. Looking to the nearby city, he knew had to get food soon and he was basically a street rat, so he had to steal the food. Smirking, he knew that not even the ninja back home could catch him when he stole any food, so he really doubted that anyone in this place could do it. So, the small blonde boy quickly made his way to the nearby city and thanks to the nice old lady in the library, he was able to find out that this place was called jailing. Walking around for a while, he found that barely anybody had blonde hair like him, so he knew this was going to be hard, but he was one to never give up, because if he did, he was dead. Walking around, he noticed a young girl in the park, with her parents really close by. Upon closer inspection, he noticed that these people were like the white-eyed people from back home, so that must mean they're rich. Not really caring about that, his short attention span went from food to wanting to play with this girl. So, walking right up to her, he said, Hi. Ha. Huh? Who is there? The girl asked. Ah, uh, I am right in front of you. I am Naruto by the way. Well, you must be stupid if you can't see that I am blind. I cannot see you. The girl laughed, although she was annoyed. I am Toph by the way. He looked at her closer and saw that her eyes were like the white-eyed people, but also a bit different. Oh, sorry. So, you can't see? No biggie. You don't have to see things to have fun, really? Sweet. Toph said, but before they could do anything, her parent rushed over. Toph dear, a girl of your statue should not be hanging around a street rat. Her mom said, but he is my new friend. No. A low-level commoner has no place being your friend. Her father said sternly. It is time to go home. Naruto sadly watched them walk away, with Toph looking back at him with a sad face. Well, at least they were not mean about it like the people back home, Naruto said to himself before he remembered that he needed food. Oh yeah. He said before following the girl and her parent home. The rich always had food to spare. However, he never noticed a small red fox trailing him. 
Chapter 2 Naruto opened his eyes to the sky as he lay down on a caravan wagon. He smirked at the small thought that he had become lazy. Ever since he met Toph five years ago, his life had gotten better. Sure, when he tried stealing from her family, she was the one who caught him, but she said that she liked him so she did not turn him in. After that, they began to meet in secret, with Toph sometimes bringing food for him, but that was not to last because his father found out one day. But thanks to her quick thinking, she made sure her father could help her and her new friend. She did not want to be alone the rest of her life with no friends, so she was able to make Narut her personal servant and the word servant was used very loosely. Why, well he didn't do shit. Okay he did do a few things for her in public and in front of her parents, but other than that, they just hung out or played games like kids do and it seemed to make her father happy. So yeah, the two really connected, and Toph even believed him when he said that he was from a different world. So, since he was not going to be able to use jutsu like those cool ninja from back home, Toph brought him to both the badger moles, who taught her true earth bending, and to master you, who taught the basics. He really didn't like the guy and neither did Toph, but he was a good teacher, well not as good as the huge animals, but still good. At first, he had a rough time trying to learn earth bending since master you figured that was not his natural element, but in the end, he was able to do it to a higher degree since the young blonde had so much energy. It also made Toph's father very happy that he could earth bend to such a degree because he would be able to protect his daughter more easily now. There was another thing that happened right after he met Toph and was accepted into her family. That was in the form of a small nine-tailed fox. Its name was Kyubi and it knew Naruto because had been sealed in the boy since he was born. That bit of info threw the duo through a loop and it made Toph really believe Naruto when he said he was from a different world because the Kyubi was an old spirit creature that disappeared to another world a very long time ago. Heck he also taught Naruto the vice basics of an old art called chakra bending. That was just bending the energy with the body. So far, he was only able to walk on walls and water. Kyubi explained his attack on the village, saying that the darkness of his old world drove it mad and it was easily controlled by a man with an orange mask. Now that the fox was in this world, it was calm and kid-like since it was a small fox now. Since then, he and the fox became quick friends and they were both lazy, who knew? Still staring at the clouds, his smile turned into a frown. He was ten now and he had left the world behind for a simple rumor, a rumor that took him away from his best friend. Flashback, Naruto kneeled in front of Toph's father, a questioning look on the man's face. Sir, I thank you for putting up with me for so long, but I have heard something, something about my old home and I wish to check out its validity. Lao smiled sadly at the boy he had come to see as a son. I see. What was your home called? Naruto hesitated for a second before he said, Kanoma. Lao's eyebrows shot up. You lived in those old ruins of the past? Yeah, I was born there before I was taken away. I wish to see if it is still there or not. Lao knew the boy must be searching for his parent and sighed, Very well, you may go. Just know this, you will always be welcome back, Naruto. Thank you. End flashback. Kyubi, do you really think those ruins are still there? From his position next to the blonde, the small fox lifted its head. It has to be for this caravan to want to travel there. That was another thing. Kyubi talked like a normal human and that freaked people out that he laughed each time. Sighing, Naruto got up and called out to the old guy driving. Hey old man, what are you looking for in Kanoa anyway? Oh, mostly for sightseeing. The old man replied with a smile. The others are going to find artifacts from the old world. Yeah, obviously, he just traveled though time and not to an entirely different world. So that meant the old darkness of the world had messed with QB when he traveled through time. Oh, like what kind of sight do you want to see? Good question. The old man said was held his chin, making Naruto face vault. Oh. I do want to see the monument known as the Hokage Mountain. Fire Shadow Mountain? Yes, that is where they carved the faces of their great leaders. And not many know this, but that city was where the Fire Nation was born, hell I am pretty sure they forgot their roots. The old Fire Nation was a respectful place and now the Fire Nation is what it is today. The old man said sadly. Kyubi looked at Naruto and saw the blonde look sad at that. A few weeks later, they arrived at the ruins of Kanoha and indeed they were ruins. Somehow, it had been preserved pretty well. Although, the most preserved thing there was the mountain. Wow old man. You were right. Naruto yelled. Of course, I was boy. The old man shouted happily. 
On the mountain were the six faces of the Hokages. The first four were very familiar to the blonde from his memory as a small child. However, the last two he didn't know of. One of that of a shoulder-length haired woman with a diamond shape on her forehead. The other was a really old guy with bandages on one of his eyes. Well, let's go see what is there. One of the caravanners shouted as they spread out to search for ancient artifacts. And so, they did. Naruto decided to go to a large broken building near the mountain. On his way, he saw the old ramen stand that he used to get free food from. Finally, he made it and made his way inside the old building. Walking through the old hallways was like a dream for the blonde. He had really missed this place. Upon reaching the door to the Hokage's office, he held his breath before opening it. What he saw is what he should have expected, but he was kind of hoping to see the old man, not an empty room with a rotting desk near the window. He sighed as he walked around it, taking in the sights until he came to six picture frames. Seeing a picture of the old man brought a smile to his face even if it was faded. Taking the picture off the wall to take a better look at his, he was surprised to see a safe behind it. Eh? He had the safe before he tried opening it and thanks to year of wear and tear, it opened just like that. Inside was the hilt of some sword. Sure, it was broken but a good souvenir. He also picked up a piece of paper that was addressed to him. Quickly opening it, he read the contents. Naruto, if you are reading this, then I am dead. I am the old man that took care of you when I could. Hopefully you can understand what I am writing because in the safe behind the picture with the blonde man is your father's stuff. Now, that hilt you probably took is the Rajin, the lightning sword that the second Hokage created. Unfortunately, when he retrieved it, it broke. So, if you can fix it, you can use it. Good luck, the old man. Still looking out for me, even in death. Naruto said with a sad smile before walked over to his father's picture. So, you're my dad, huh? He said as she stared at the picture for a minute before putting down on the rotting desk. He didn't feel like thinking about the past and how he could have changed it. Opening the safe, he was neat with a scroll that said chakra exercises and the Rasengan, a picture of his parents, and two headbands. One with a leaf symbol on it and the other just had a swirl mark on it. Quickly putting them in his backpack that brought with him, he left to search the rest of the ruins. Walking around town, he came upon the Huba compound. If he remembered correctly, this was the home of those white-eyed people. White eyes. That reminded him of Toph. He hoped she was doing okay. Shaking his head away from those thought, he knew she was okay, she was Toph after all. He made his way into the compound and looked around at all the destroyed buildings and ruined flower beds. He walked through the hallways, occasionally going in the rooms. He came upon a room that belonged to a girl and he blushed when he saw her picture. There was a name on the picture frame and it read Hinata. Her younger pictures reminded him on Toph, but a timid Toph. Heh, Toph was not timid, not by a long shot. Soon, he came upon a large room. There was a desk near the back of the room. Walking up to it, there was a note on it. It said something about a young boy creating new fighting style that combined their style with something new, but the idea was rejected. Now that got the blonde's attention. A new fighting style would be awesome. So, rummaging around in the desk, he found a scroll that had the new Hyuga style in it. Upon closer inspection, he found that it was an incomplete bending style that bent lightning. Earth and lightning? Heh, no one will ever see that coming. He said as he made his way back to the caravan, but before he did, he tripped over something. Looking to see what it was, he found it was a corpse with a black cloak with red clouds on it. Deciding that he liked it, he took that as well and along with the figure's straw hat, Itachi's hat. The body also made the blonde look closer at it and the image of the one friendly Achiha came to mind. Shaking his head, he headed back. The next few days were spent with the caravan, Naruto helped out wherever he could and it was much appreciated because he was an earthbender. This still made Naruto smile though because these people had become like family to him in the weeks that he had spent with them. One night, when he slept, he had a strange dream. In this dream, he was watching a younger version of his self be chased by the old villagers until that ghost came and helped him. He watched as his younger self disappeared to the time he was now in and then the scenery changed to nothing but white and the ghost was now just a shadow as it turned to him. Now that you have returned, I can speak with you. The old sage said. Wait, why did you do all of this, not that I didn't appreciate it. Naruto interrupted. Simple. 
In your time, you were not treated like you were supposed to, and in this time, you are treated like a normal human. The sage explained. Although, you may have been the child of prophecy, that time was beyond help. Oh, but do not fret, your journey has only begun. In this time, you shall help the avatar save the world. You also have a special power. It is to fuse with the cubi to fire bend. But, fire bending is bad, right? Only when it is used for the wrong reasons like the Fire Nation is doing now. The sage said. Also, you have my blood in your veins, my power is yours but it will only reveal itself when the time is right. I see. Oh, and thanks for helping me all those years ago. It is no problem, Naruto, just know this, the other eight will be coming for you through time. They are controlled by those with the cloak you picked up earlier. The old sage warned. It would be advantageous for you to turn them to your side. I will do my best. Naruto said before the dream ended for him. However, in the plane where the sage resided, he sighed. The child of prophecy and the avatar, this would will see much change and maybe for the better. From his position on the top of the caravan wagon, Naruto's eyes shot open to see dawn and black smoke. His eyes widened in panic as he quietly flipped down and peered over the top to see most of the caravanners dead, with Fire Nation soldiers all around. The blonde did see that the old man was still alive and that one of the soldiers was yelling at him. Bullshit. The soldier shouted. You came here to find old artifacts that could be deadly to the great Fire Nation. No. We came to dig up the past for fun. We wanted to learn about the past. The old man said tiredly. I don't believe you, old man. The Fire Nation soldier growled out as he grabbed him by the neck. This relic of a city is only known to spies. The normal fools of this land should know nothing about this old place, and yet we see caravanners who want to dig up the past for just knowing of the past. All that is just a pathetic lie. You want to steal from the Fire Nation. You want to find a weapon that will end the Fire Nation. No. The old man said calmly despite the situation. I want nothing of that. I am an old man who cares not for this pointless war. You and your kin have become so powerful that you fear to lose it and that makes you paranoid. Naruto saw that the old man was truly in trouble and had to do something about it, but the brief look from the old man made Naruto freeze in place. A look that said not to interfere and that he had accepted his time. Stupid Earth Kingdom old man. The soldier raged. You will die for your crimes here. He brought his fist back and then sent it at the old man's face, shooting out a blast of fire that melted through the old man's face. Still Naruto could not take it. A grandfather figure died right before his eyes and the Kyubi, who was right behind him, felt that the blonde was losing control of his emotions and that his power could very well be affected. Oh no. Arg. Naruto raged as he jumped into the air and then slammed down on the ground, creating a shockwave so intense that it knocked all the soldiers down and upturned some of the earth. You killed him for stupid reasons. Naruto shouted as he stomped on the ground while throwing his fist out at an odd angle. The result was the ground spider webbing all around him before Spike shot up to impale most of the firebenders. The only ones to survive was their leader and a few others who were gawking at the sight of a ten-year-old boy destroying most of their forces with earth bending to such a degree. The leader, who also killed the old man, growled as he regained his senses and shouted, Kill that earth bending brat. The soldiers complied by all sending fire at the blonde all at once. Frowning, Naruto charged forward, weaving through the fire when there was free space. However, there was soon a well of fire coming his way, so he rose the earth up and created a protective sphere around himself. When the fire died down, all they saw was a boulder. A boulder that looked to be spinning in place before zooming off toward one of the soldiers and flattening him. The ball then changed direction before the earth rose around it, creating spikes in Madeira that shot off to the soldier who dodged them. The ball cracked open before Naruto shot out with giant stone fists and he got in close to punch out the Fire Nation soldiers. He then turned on the leaders, thinking that the soldiers were down for good. He reformed the stone fists into a long spear and ran at the leader. The leader scoffed at all the useless soldiers and stepped to the side of the spear and shattered it with a well-placed blow. He then kicked the blonde back and made his fist go ablaze. Now you die, Earth Kingdom trash. Kyuubi, now over his shock from Naruto's anger and power, saw what was to come and made a mad dash for the blonde, but even he knew he would not make it in time for Naruto to go unscathed. The leader sent a very hot fireball at Naruto, who was just get back up and his back was facing the leader. So the fire hit him square on the back, 
burning away at the shirt and scorching his back. The force of the fireball made Naruto hit the ground and hit his head, knocking him out. Heh, I guess I will let you live, boy. But, not without a mark. The leader smirked evilly as he lit his finger and made a spiral motion, unknowingly creating Naruto's family symbol on his back. Well, before he was bitten by a small nine-tailed fox. Arg! Veil vale creature! He screamed as he brought his hand back to himself to inspect the damage. Ignoring the man for now, QB made his way to the blonde. Upon seeing the burn mark, he tried healing it, but it just left a scar. Oh, I am sorry Naruto. He said as he put a paw on the blonde's shoulder. A sudden image of the Sage of the Six Paths phased into his mind before he and Blonde glowed brightly before they both went up in a column of flame. W what the hell is this? The leader shouted to the heavens. He widened his eyes in fear as the fire disappeared to reveal a giant golden fox staring at him. I am both the boy and the fox. You shall feel our wrath. The fox paused before a smile formed on its vulpine features. Tell me mortal, what do you get when you combine fire and earth? Ma magma. Bingo. The giant fox said before it slammed its paws on the ground, which made the earth creep up the leader, preventing him from going anywhere. The fox then roars loudly as a golden stream of fire shot out toward the man. The end result was a statue of the man screaming in terror. The fox then shrunk down to that of a human, still it looked to be glowing with golden energy. It took Naruto's backpack and disappeared. The golden figure reappeared in a cave that that was on the side of the Hokage mountain. It then depowered in Kyubi and Naruto fell to the floor, unconscious. Chapter 3 Six years have passed since Naruto left to explore the world and find information about Kanoha. Six years since he went ballistic on those Fire Nation soldiers for killing his caravan family. Six years since he unlocked the power of fusion with Kyubi. Six years since he gained the name of Golden Fox. Naruto now wears black pants, an orange shirt, the black cloak with red clouds buttoned up and with it shredded on the bottom, and black combat boots. On his head he wears the large straw hat that covers his face from view and on his cloak shoulders are the metal plates there were on the headbands. A lot has happened since he left to travel around. He was a major enemy of the Fire Nation, but they never actually knew what he looked like. And the fact that Kyubi was still his small self made it hard for the Fire Nation to track him and said Fox was resting on his shoulder. Kyubi could now fire bend when he wanted to but it was weak and limited. His true power only shows itself when he fuses with Naruto. Naruto made sure that his earth bending was powerful, he needed it every time he beat Fire Nation raiders. He may have traveled a lot but he never went into the Fire Nation. He was not suicidal to go along despite his deep hatred of the Fire Nation because of what they did that day. No, he still wanted to make sure he saw Toph again. He self-taught himself the Hyuga style of lightning bending. He was a major badass when he used that but halfway through, when he made sure that it was indeed a not finished style, he decided to add some weapons to do so. He learned to use Chinese hook swords, which were good for messing with the enemy's head and his other weapon was his favorite, Wolverine style claws that is keeps hidden in his sleeves. Through those two styles of bending, he made a new one. He got the idea when he was training a lightning storm and all the lightning would ever do would hit the ground. So, he made a new style called gravity bending which was just a combination of both fighting styles. He did wonder if this was the power the old sage mentioned in his dream, but who knows what it is. Currently, he had made his way back to jailing and was in a place called Earth Rumble 6. He had asked around where a good place to fight was because he knew that is where Toph would be. She loved to fight and show off. But he was not going to fight, he wanted to see how far Toph had improved over the years. So far, he was impressed as he sat in the stands, a few rows above the avatar and his friends, not that knew the tidbit of information just yet. After a while, when she beat all of her opponents, a man named Xian Fu announced a challenge to all that would challenge Toph for a bag of gold coins. It seemed that no one was brave enough to accept the challenge after a bit of wait until a young boy accepted the challenge. Naruto could see the arrow like tattoos on the boy and figured that he must either be an airbender or at the very least a fanatic, despite his Earth Kingdom clothes. He thought he saw the kid a few seats down from him, along with those water tribe kids. This should be interesting. He said to himself. When the fight began, the boy said he just wanted to talk to her and his male friend booed that. He silently thanked the water tribe girl for smacking him and chuckled to himself. She was also very easy on the eyes. 
Anyway, ripping his eyes away from the girl, he refocused on Telf's fight and raised an eyebrow at the scene he was witnessing. The kid was light on his feet, that was for sure and he knew from experience that Tof was having problems. So, when she threw a rather large rock at the kid, he was mildly surprised when the kid used the air to blow away the rock and he also sent another blast of wind that knocked Tof out of the ring. Tof is not going to be happy about that. He muttered, and he was right as she stomped out of the area. From his position he shook his head and said aloud, so, the boy is an airbender, no wonder she had trouble. An interesting development. Katara must have heard him because she turned around to look at him, but when she looked, Naruto was gone. Through the day, Naruto observed how Tof got along with the Avatar and his friends. It was comical to watch. However, when Tof decided to be nice, she took the young Avatar to the backyard and talked with him. Even though I was born blind, I have never had a problem with seeing. I see with earth bending. She said as she jumped off the bridge in his backyard. It's kind of like seeing with my feet. I feel the vibrations in the earth. And I can see where everything is, you, that tree, and even those ants. Aang looked surprised at that as he searched for said insects. That's amazing. Tof frowned and said, my parents don't understand. They've always treated me like I was helpless. She then whispered, except he didn't. Not hearing that last part, Aang asked, is that why you became the blind bandit? Yeah. Then why stay here where you're not happy? Aang asked. They're my parents, where else am I supposed to go? Asked Tof, other than go and find him. You could come with us. Aang suggested with a smile. Yeah, you guys get to go wherever you want. Tof said dully. No one telling you what to do, that's the life. She then put on a sad look. It's just not my life. Ah shit. I am sorry Tof, for leaving you behind without even telling you goodbye. Naruto thought sadly. Have you really given up? Then a few things happened at once. Tof sharply turned her head and he idly wondered if she found him, but that was not it as she said they were being ambushed. That surprised him because he had not been tuning into the earth like he usually did. Soon they were taken by the proprietor of Earth Rumble 6 in large metal cages. A few minutes later, the rest of Aang's group along with Master Yu and her parents arrived on the scene. Naruto knew that Toph would not be taken like that without a fight, so he quietly made his way to the arena to see the upcoming chaos. And chaos is what it was when they freed Toph to her parents, but kept the avatar. He was about to reveal himself and help out, but Toph came back after the water tribe girl asked for Toph's help. That made Naruto smile as she finally stood up to her father and proceeded to kick the shit out of Xian Fu's lackeys. My, she has really improved. He said aloud from his seat behind Master Yu and Lao. Recognizing that voice, they sharply turned around but found no one. After a while he saw Toph sneak out of her house, to the place where the avatar would be taking off on his flying bison. So, you are finally leaving that place. He said to himself as he watched them take off. Good luck Toph. We'll meet up soon again and hopefully you won't be too pissed at me. However, right now, he was going to reveal himself to her father. After he was done talking to Xian Fu and Master Yu, and they left, he made himself known to her father. You know, men like them are fueled by greed and will do anything for money. How do you expect them to return her in one piece? You yourself saw how good she has gotten. She will not go down without a fight. Who are you, and how did you get in here? Lao asked with some panic as he got ready to call the guards, but he did recognize the voice. He didn't recognize the clothes though. Oh, come now old man. How could you forget me? Naruto said as he took of his hat. Lao smiled brightly at the son he never had. Oh Naruto, it is so good to see you again. Lao said with a slight laugh. Things have been quiet without you here. Now what do you mean? Where do you really think she learned earthbending? From Master Yu of course. Naruto shook his dead in disappointment. No. Think of that old story of the first two earthbenders. Who taught them? The badger moles? How? She told me she got lost when she was a toddler. They helped her and taught her true earthbending. She brought me to them after I got the basics down from Master Yu. She is not that sweet daughter you coddle. She is an earthbender and a damn good one and to take that away from her would be like killing her spirit. Lao slumped in his chair. What would you have me do then? 
simple. Let her continue her journey with the Avatar. I can see that he has a good heart and will not let harm come to her. If you will allow this, I will join them and further protect her as I have in the past. Lao sighed. He wanted his daughter to be happy and she was always happy when this boy was with her and who could blame her, this boy had such a good heart that made even him warm up to the boy. Fine, I will allow it. Just make sure those men do not hurt her, you have my word. Naruto said with a bow, Honey, who is are you talking to now? Poppy, Toph's mother asked as she came in. When she saw Naruto, she smiled and rushed up to hug the boy. Oh Naruto! I am so glad you are back, Heh, it is nice to see your lovely face again too. Naruto said, which made her blush a bit. But I am not staying. I am going to protect Toph, make sure that you do. She said with a smile, Naruto nodded before he made his way out of the house and then disappeared from sight. In his search for Toph, he came upon a few odd trails. One was that of large amount of white fur from what he assumed was from the flying bison. Then there were tracks from some type of machine, which was most likely from the Fire Nation. Finally, there were tracks from an ostrich horse. He wondered who was after the Avatar and by proxy, Toph, could be that Zuko character I have heard of. He said to himself before he shrugged and zoomed off down the trails. Along the way, he found different tracks and smirked. The Avatar must have gotten smart and split the trails. That meant he was alone and the other three went in a different direction. He would help the three because he was sure the Avatar could hold his own. Soon he came upon the sight of the two Water Tribe teens. They, for the lack of a better word, were getting their asses kicked by two Fire Nation girls. The Flying Bison was about to help them but he put a stop at advances. Allow me. He saw that the girl was pinned to a tree and that her brother was slumped on the ground, his arms and one leg disabled by the girl in pink. I thought that when Tai Lee and I finally caught up to you guys, it would be more exciting. The gloomy Fire Nation girl said with a sigh. Oh well, victory is boring. Boring? Then let me brighten up your day. Naruto said from behind them as he did a hand motion and the girls were buckling under an unknown pressure. What the? What is this and who are you? Tylee asked the black and red clouded cloaked boy with a too large straw hat for his head. My name is known many in the Fire Nation through fear, but to one girl I am known as an old friend. Only, I don't see her. It was at this point, he leaned over and asked Katara, hey, where is Toph? Uh, she went off on her own after a fight I had with her. Katara said weakly. Please don't leave. Naruto rolled his eyes under his hat. He knew that Toph just must be tired and would be back to help her new friends soon. But he was now here and he would not let her friends be captured by the Fire Nation. You don't have to worry about that. He said before turning his head back to the Fire Nation girls. You know, if you beautiful girls were not part of the Fire Nation, I have a feeling we would have hit it off. He said, making both girls blush a bit. Sadly, it is not meant to be. He let the pressure go but hit the earth with his foot and sent the two girls flying into the river. Katar just gawked as the mysterious figure pulled the shuriken out that was keeping her against the tree and then help her brother by poking him in the spots the girl did. As he turned to leave, she asked, Wait, who are you? Where are you going? An old friend of Toph's, but I am not sure what her reaction will be when she sees me again. Naruto said with a chuckle. As to where I am going. Well I am going to help the Avatar. If you are coming then we need to hurry. He then jumped on to Appa back. When Katara and Sokka managed to get there, Sokka asked, Why, who is Aang fighting that is so dangerous? Zuko's sister. It is the most obvious selection for it to be her since those two are here. They are her best friends. How do you know that? Katara asked suspiciously. When you travel around as much as I have, you learn a few things. Naruto said cryptically. But do not worry that pretty face of yours, I am sure we can take her. When they reached the rundown town where Aang was, Katara rushed in to save Aang from being turned into barbecue. When Azula started chasing her, Sokka then came out to play by swinging his machete at the girl, who backed off into the street. Naruto then jumped down next to her and swung his claws at her. That sent her to the front of an alley where he saw through the earth that Toph was waiting. She moved instantly, tripping up the Fire Nation princess. They, along with Zuko and Iroh cornered Azula with unknown teammate work. 
Azula stared at the seven people in front of her and smirked. Well, look at this. Enemies and traitors all working together. I am done. I know when I am beaten. You got me, but I am curious, who is the cloaked one? Naruto smirked. If the Violet Beauty would like to know so much, I shall give away the title the Fire Nation has given me. Golden Fox. The Avatars group all had confused looks on while Azula, Zuko, and Iroh all had fearful and shocked looks on their faces. Azula quickly got over her shock and used Iroh as shock against him and sent a fire blast directly at his chest. Zuko got angry and along with the others sent a blast of their element at the Fire Nation princess. Naruto himself sent a blast of earth. The resulting explosion was enough for her to get away. Naruto watched silently as Katara tried to help Iroh, but Zuko was so panicked that he sent out a fire wave to get them to leave. He just sighed as he followed the group onto the flying bison and took off into the growing night. When they landed a few hours on a mountaintop, Naruto saw that everyone was fast asleep. He smiled at Toph and said, sleep well. Kyuubi, who had not been seen up until now appeared on Appa's head. So, when can I come out? Toph will recognize you in an instant. Stay hidden until morning, which is when I will have to reveal myself. Whatever you say. Kyuubi said before he shrank and jumped in Naruto's cloak for the night. The next day. Hey Katara, who is this guy again? Saka asked as he poked at the sleeping form of Naruto, who was still in his cloak and big straw hat. I think he said he was the golden fox. The water tribe girl said. I have never heard of him. Aang said as he jumped down from Appa, with Momo on his shoulder. I have. Tauf said. My father often heard reports about how a giant golden fox crushed Fire Nation soldiers and free whatever slaves they had captured, but this guy couldn't be him, could it? I seriously doubt it. Saka deadpanned. Believe what you will. Naruto suddenly said, freaking them out. I am me, and that is all the fools in the world need to know. Who are you really? Aang asked. Well Avatar, I am a friend of a friend of yours. Naruto said with a smirk, not that they could see it. Okay, this guy is getting on my nerves. Toph said, but this guy is reminding me of, no they can't be the same person. Who? Asked Katara. An old friend of mine. He was a real smart ass when we were little, but he was one of my only friends and then he left just one day. My father told me that he left to find some of his past. Well, he did say that he was an old friend of yours. Could they be the same person? Katara asked. Oh really? Well then, take off your hat. Toph said to the now standing Naruto. Very well then, mini mole. Naruto said, making Toph's face set in shock, because Naruto had often called her that. He slowly took off his hat revealing a whisker-marked face and a head full of blonde hair. Hey, it has been a while. Naruto. Toph screamed in rage as she upturned a large rock and slammed it into him, sending him into the cliffside wall. Six years. You left for six years without even a goodbye. She screamed and she sent a few more rocks at the blonde. I was alone all that time. You could have at least left QB with me. When they were inches apart, she pulled him into a big hug. The rest of the gang just stared in shock as Toph slammed large rocks into the blonde teen that helped them the day before. But what confused them the most was when Toph pulled the blonde into a hug while burying her face in his chest. I missed you so much. She quietly said as tears formed in her milky eyes. Naruto returned the hug with a sad smile. I am sorry Toph, but the day I left was the day I found that I am not from another world, but from the past. I found my old home and who my parents were. You big idiot, take me with you next time. Don't worry, I am not going anywhere. I am here to join your new group. Really? Tell fast, well then you are going to help me teach Aang how to earthbend. She paused and asked, what else did you learn on your travels? Naruto smirked evilly, how to crush the Fire Nation with their own weight. What? Gravity bending, another form of earthbending. Oh? Is that what you did to those two girls me and Sokka were fighting? Katara asked. Why yes it was. Naruto said as he disappeared from Toph's side and appeared next to Katara. I turned their own weight against them. He then smiled softly as he stared into her eyes. But you know, I bet you could have beaten them with your fancy water bending and your body. You know, throw them off with your beauty, make them jealous. 
Katara blushed madly while Sokka and Aang both growled, for different reasons of course. Tof just smacked her head. The young earthbender stalked up to the blonde and bashed him on the head, sending him on the ground with swirly eyes. Ow, is that it you big idiot? Oh no. Naruto said standing up again like nothing happened. I self-taught myself how to lightning bend and energy bend. Say what? Simple, is it not? Came the voice of Kyuubi from atop of Appa's head. Energy bending is the use of chakra or chi. Naruto can walk up walls and walk on water, but that is not all, he can create a sphere of pure spiraling energy and that packs quite a punch. There was silence for a while from everyone but Naruto and Tof, who were counting down on their fingers. Talking Fox. Your new friends are kind of slow on the uptake, just so you know. Deadpanned QB. You have a talking fox? Aang asked. Yep, and he is the reason I am called the Golden Fox. Why? Tof asked. He has never shown any powers before. Well, he has weak fire bending skills, and no, he cannot teach it to you, Avatar. We have a special power together. We fuse because he is an ancient beast, and through that power, we create lava. Naruto said. Sweet. Sakai yelled, not caring how it worked. Okay, so how do you lightning bend? Katara and Aang asked at the same time. Well, that style is not complete, but I got it out of the ruins of my old home. A old place by the name of Kanoha. Okay, so you can do all these things and now thanks to Tof, you are also going to be my earth bending teacher? Aang asked and when he got a nod from the blonde, he jumped in the air shouting, yes. Tof smirked as she leaned into whispered into Naruto's ear, he is going to hate us after the training is done. Oh yeah, count on it. Naruto said with a light-hearted chuckle. Tof smiled, happy to be in the presence of her best friend again. Chapter 4. Today is the day. Aang shouted happily in their little camp in the rocky area that his group was currently in. Of course, it was still morning, so there was not much reaction to him being awake. Can you believe it, after all that time searching for a teacher, I am finally learning earth bending. And this place, it's perfect. Don't you think? Saka? Unless you count Tof, that is in Saka, who glared at the bald kid for waking him up. Oh, you're still sleeping, huh? Saka just grunted. Sorry. Then the earth shook as Tof's makeshift rock tent exploded. Good morning, earth bending student. Good morning, Sifu Tof. Aang said with a smile, Hey, you never call me Sifu Katara. The water tribe girl said sleepily, Well, if you think I should? Offer the bald kid. However, before anyone more could be said, Sokka growled as he slinked around in his sleeping back, glaring and mumbling about the group. Sorry Snoozles, we will do our earth bending as quietly as possible. Before she could send him in the air, she heard Naruto, who was sitting at the bottom of one of the rocks, with his cloak as a blanket. His hat was over his head. I agree with Sokka on this one, he said as he took of the hat along with the cloak. Seriously, can't you wait an hour? No. Tof shouted with a smirk. Time to get your lazy ass up. She hit the ground with her foot and both Sokka and Naruto went flying in the air. Of course, Sokka went up scream while the blonde went up with a deadpan expression. Sighing, Naruto used his Chinese hook swords, that were in the cloak that flew up with him, and latched onto a root that was coming out of the large rocks. After that, he flipped off of that and used gravity bending to slowly levitate him back down to the ground. Saka just fell back to the ground and then went off to find a quiet place to sleep. Soon, Naruto, Tof, and Aang were in a wide area, perfect for learning how to earth bend. In front of them were a few boulders. The key to earth bending is your stance. You've got to be steady and strong. Not to mention you have to have the mentality of a true earthbender. Naruto thought as he observed as he leaned against a rock. Rock is a stubborn element. She continued before pushing Aang to make a point. If you are going to move it, you got to be like a rock yourself. Like a rock, got it. Aang replied as he rubbed the spot where she shoved him. No airbender, I really don't think you do. Naruto thought with a shake of his head. Good. Tuff said as she changed up her stance a bit. Now the motion for this is actually pretty simple. She then shoved at the rock and it went screaming into the side of a cliff. Okay, you ready to give it a try? Aang said with serious face as he did the motion but all that happened was the bald kid punching the rock and sending air at it, 
which blew him away and into Appa, who was yards away. That made the blonde laugh. Rock beats airbender. Saka chuckled from his position, making the blonde laugh harder. Aang shot up and glared at his blonde teacher as he stalked over to Toph. I don't understand what went wrong. He did it like you said. Katara input her opinion. Maybe there is another way. Aang suggested. There's not another way. Naruto finally spoke up. You may think there is another way, that is the airbender mentality. If you want to do this and do it right, you have to have the mentality of an earthbender. As in, you literally have to face things, head on. Exactly. Like this. Toph shouted as she jumped at a nearby boulder and completely shattered it, freaking out Aang. Katara frowned as she caught up to Toph, with Naruto right behind her. Listen, I have been training Aang for a long time, he really responds well to a positive teaching experience. Lots of encouragement and praise. Kind words. If he is doing something wrong, maybe a gentle nudge in the right direction. Thanks, Katara, a gentle nudge. I'll try that. Toph said with a smile, making Naruto roll his eyes. Let me take it from here Toph. Naruto said, which got a nod from the girl. Naruto then slammed his foot into the ground and pulls backwards, bringing Aang right to him. That also got a muttered, show off from Toph. Aang, who was sitting on the ground, looked at the blonde with wide eyes and was a little afraid of his smile. Now, if I can learn earthbending, anyone can avatar. Naruto started. For you see, when I started learning this art, well, I was not pretty. My teacher even thought it was not even my natural element, and he was right. What? What was it? Naruto's smile widened. My natural element was the opposite of earth, that was why I had such a hard time doing it. So, it was wind, like you. I just had a lot of energy and made sure I could earthbend is all. All you need is the determination and you'll get it like me. Really? Oh yeah, but the training will not be fun. It will be tough. You sure you can handle it? Naruto said with a raised eyebrow while Toph smiled at the conversation. He did not mince words and that is what she liked about him. Oh yeah, there will be pain. Katara inched away from the smiling girl, getting a bad feeling. Yes, I can. I am not afraid. Aang said. When Naruto heard this, his smile became evil. Oh, you will be. You will be. Keep your knees high twinkle toes. Toph screamed as Aang stumbled around with a small bag of rocks on his shoulders, but that didn't seem all that bad. What was, however, was Naruto using gravity bending to make it weigh like a large boulder. Toph was also messing with his footing, throwing him off balance. Soon, he just fell over. Naruto was teaching the bald kid the stances and would throw rocks at him if he got it wrong, which happened a lot. He also rose a stone statue out of the ground to practice the moves up close. But Aang was still wary of that and when Naruto said it was either the statue that could not fight or himself and he would bring the pain to the avatar. Aang chose the stone statue, making the blonde pout. Over the next few days, Naruto and Toph put Aang through many odd and dangerous exercises to make the avatar tougher and it seemed to work near the end. This time, we are going to try something different. Toph began. Instead of moving a rock, you're going to stop a rock. Get in your horse stance. Once he was, she continued. You see Naruto on that cliff? He is going to roll that large boulder down at you. If you have an attitude of an earthbender, you will stay in your stance to stop the rock. Even from up high on the cliff, Naruto could see that Aang was freaking out. Let's hope you got what it takes. When Katara voiced her opinion, Toph made it harder for the kid to do this by placing a blindfold on his so that he had to sense the vibrations of the rock instead of seeing it. Ha, yeah, classic. Toph made sure that Aang was in position before she yelled up to her blonde friend. Okay Naruto. Send it down. My pleasure. The blonde drawled out as she pushed the rock down to the airbender. When it came down to it, Aang chickened out by jumping over it. Toph stalked right up to the young avatar and got right in his face. Naruto leisurely walked down, expecting this, so he was not as mad as his old friend. QB watched boredly as things transpired. He thought it was more entertaining when Naruto was learning all this, especially when Naruto failed this particular exercise and was flattened by the rock. I, I guess I just panicked. Aang explained weakly. I don't know what to say. 
there's nothing to say. You blew it. You had a perfect stance and perfect form, but when it came right down to it, you didn't have the guts. She yelled as he poked him in the chest, making the avatar fall on his ass. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are sorry, if you are not tough enough to stop the rock, then you could have let it smush you instead of jumping out of the way like a jelly bone wimp. I mean, that's what Naruto did. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. QB laughed from atop of Appa's head. This gained a tick mark on said blonde's head. Not one of his greatest moments. Toph smirked at that before shouting at Aang some more. She even thought it was funny. Not are you ready to face that rock like an earthbender. Aang hung his head and said, no, I don't think I do. Katara put her hands on his shoulders and said, Aang, it is no big deal. We'll take a break and we'll try again when you're ready. Besides, you still have a lot of water bending to work on, okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Aang said as he got up to follow her. Yeah whatever, go splash around till you feel better. Toph dismissed the boy as she walked away. Naruto sighed as he slapped the avatar's back. Don't worry, you'll get it in time. He then took off towards Toph. You know, that was a little harsh. So, what? Toph shouted as she rounded on him. Was I any less harsh when I was training you? No, not really. Naruto deadpanned as he thought about the boulder stopping exercise and him getting flattened before she yelled at him to get back up and try it again. Then why should I be with him? Toph asked before she sighed. But I guess we could change this up a bit. We are not getting anywhere fast. Right, and I have an idea for that. Naruto said as he leaned in and whispered something her ear, making the girl smirk. Kyuubi sighed as he trotted off to find something to eat. This crap was boring to him. Hell, he might even find out what was taking Sokka so long. Rinningen eyes opened up in the darkness. The sight this made eight people shiver. I am tasking you to find the Kyuubi. He has disappeared from this time and has gone to the future. Do this and I'll let you go. I'll let all of you go. Pain lied. To what time will we be going? A girl with green hair asked with narrowed eyes. She did not trust this man or any of the people that was in his group. His group had captured all the other Jinshuriki and for what? They never said why. These people were just so creepy that it could not be good. I to where we bend the elements and there is no longer any ninja. The man said with no emotion, creeping the girl out even more. This jutsu will send you to that time, now get into position. Once they were, he spoke again. Once you are all together and have the kyubi, send chakra to your tattoos and you will be here once again. Ninja art, time travel jutsu. Pain slammed his hand down on the array of symbols on the ground which began to glow as they stretched around the other eight Jinshuriki before the glow completely engulfed them and they fizzed out of existence. Pain looked at the spots they had occupied and muttered, fools. Unbeknownst to Naruto, Aang, and the others, the sky had lightened up and eight bolts of light shot over the land, crashing on it like meteors. One by one, the eight awoke and begun their search for the Kyuubi and by extension, Naruto. Most of them, however, did not trust Pain, so when they did find the Kyuubi, they hoped that they could join forces. However, some of them didn't care. They just wanted to watch the world burn. One of those was close to our blonde friend and his new friends. He had a feeling that they would pass into the region he was in, so he would wait. He would wait for sand was like time to him, endless. For the next few hours, Naruto watched Toph torment Aang by taking his nut and staff, using the latter to break the former, making Aang irritated. And it worked very well as the airbender watched Toph walk off with his staff while bagging it against the cliff walls. Soon Katara came over while he was trying to meditate and he almost snapped at the water tribe girl. However, when she told him that she had not seen Sokka all day, the young airbender went off to search for him. Hey Baldi. Kyuubi's voice rang out as Aang was searching for his friend. All these annoyances were really starting to affect Aang because he started to develop a twitch in his eyes. What it is Kyuubi? The small nine-tailed had an annoying smile on his vulpine features as he said. I think I found that simple-minded water tribe warrior. The fool is literally in the Gorand. The fox then laughed at that as he led the young airbender to Sokka's position, where a young saber-toothed mountain lion moose cub was messing with his hair. However, when they had to fight off its mother, Naruto saw the pure determination in Aang's eyes to protect his friend from danger and literally blew the giant creature away.
They heard clapping from a foot from them and saw Tulf just sitting there with a smile on her face. What are you doing here? Sokka questioned loudly, just enjoying the show. What? You were there the whole time. Aang asked. Pretty much, so was Naruto. She said pointing to a tree behind them. They turned their heads to see Naruto, who was hanging from a tree using chakra. Yo! He said with a smile and wave. What are you doing up there? Saka asked. Oh, just hanging around. Naruto replied with a shrug. Why didn't either of you do anything? Aang shouted. Saka was in trouble. I was in trouble. You could have helped get him out and helped us get away. Guess it just didn't occur to me. Tof said with a shrug as Naruto jumped down. Tof threw one of Aang's nuts on the ground and was about whack it with his stick again but he had enough. Enough. I want my staff back. Do it now. Tof commanded. Do what? Earth bend. Naruto said calmly from his position next to the earth girl. You just stood your ground against a crazy beast to protect your friend. Hell, what is even more impressive is that you stood your ground against Tof. But, do it. The two earthbenders yelled. Aang quickly turned to a nearby boulder and pushed it away using earthbending, making a large smile come to the airbender's face. You did it. You're an earthbender now. Tof said with a smile. I can't believe it. Sheared Aang. Well believe it is baldy. Congrats. Naruto cheered as he slapped the airbenders back a bit too hard, making him fall on the ground. Ah, this is really a wonderful touching moment. So can you get me out of here so I can give you both a big snuggly hug? Begged Saka from his position in the ground. No problem Saka. Aang began as he attempted to get his friend out of the ground. Actually, you might want one of us to do that. Tof said, stopping him. Yeah, you might crush the idiot. That's the pot calling the kettle black. Tof commented as she popped Sokka up and then dragged him out of the ground the rest of the way. Hey! I resent that. Naruto shouted defiantly. Hey, it is true you know. QB said as he trotted up next to him. That is why you get along with them so well. You're all idiots. Glares are what he got on response. What? I am just speaking the truth. You're all idiotic kids. Okay, that is one thing I didn't miss about you, QB. Tof deadpanned. Eh, I am just being me. QB snickered. And one of these days it is going to get you killed. Naruto said as he cracked his knuckles. Yeah, you lead me to Saka and didn't even do anything to help me. You just laid there. Aang said. So, so, time for a little payback. Tulf said with an evil grin that was on all present company. Hey, what is with those smiles? Asked QB nervously. No stay back. I be good. Run away. With that, the QB took off toward camp, hoping a certain water tribe girl would protect him. They usually got along well after all. That didn't work out like he planned because the girl ran past him, happy that her brother was okay. Ah, shit. He said before taking off again to hide behind a certain boulder. You found him. Katara said happily as she and her brother hugged. The whole time I was in that hole, not knowing if I was going to live or die. It makes a man think about what's really important. I realized Saka said, but was then cut off by Aang. Hey Katara. Look what I can do. Aang announced as he demonstrated his new earth bending skill. The pushed a certain boulder away erecting a high-pitched girly scream. While Naruto, Aang, and Sokka went to check it out, Katara leaned over to Tof and said, You tried the positive reinforcement, didn't you? Tof smiled knowing. Yep, it worked wonders. Eh hey, aha! Don't come any closer you piscotic morons. Kyuubi shouted as he shot out of where he had been hiding, only for the boulder to almost crush him. Baldi almost killed me. He shouted as his size went from a small dog to a kitten and jumped right into Katara's arms. Save me. Ah, did they scare you? Katara asked. Yes ma'am. He chirped as he smuggled into the chest's chest, all the while giving off a foxy smirk at the three boys. The three said boy all the gawking looks on their faces. Ugh, my sister is too nice. A.H. That useless bag of fur is so lucky. 
When I get my hands on him I will, he 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 Naruto stated with an evil chuckle and said Fox got a chill down his spine, why is he so lucky? Aang asked naively. Naruto looked at the avatar with a deadpan expression. Did those monks teach you nothing of puberty? Look at his current position. Oh. Oof. Aang said with a blush before his smile turned evil like Naruto's as they both chuckled evilly. Afraid for his own safety, Sokka inched away from the two boys. Toph had gained a tick mark on her forehead thanks to that whole conversation. She didn't why she did it but she shifted the earth a bit so that Naruto fell right on his face. Idiot. Chapter 5. What's out here? Sokka asked. The group was currently in a wild open area filled with lots of holes and barely any grass. After Aang finally got the hand of earth bending and with Toph and Naruto teaching him more earth bending skills, the young avatar thought it was time for a small vacation. Naruto was like Toph and could see through earth bending like she did, so when he tapped his foot, he smirked seeing all the small life forms. What are you planning, Aang? A lot actually. Toph said as she put her hand on the ground to better see. There's hundreds of little. Shoo, I know you can see underground, but don't ruin the surprise. Aang said before he played a few tunes on his flute. Meerkat-like creatures came up from the ground and sung along. Yeah, I am putting an orchestra together. The avatar cheered as Momo tried to get at the creatures. Orchestra, huh? Well, la de di. Saka said, but to him, he was mocked by the creatures way they copied him. Heh, I'll agree with the simpleton on this one. QB said boredly from atop of app ahead. This is a bit boring in my opinion. Oh, and what do you think is fun to do with these guys? Aang asked. QB smirked. Lunch. He said while Naruto smacked his head as Aang went a little green. Of course, with my blonde friend here, this could be an opportune for a song. Naruto smiled knowingly at that. You know, I have one song in mind. Hakuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. QB growled, he did not like this song that much, but it was catchy and it seemed that the avatar was playing along with his flute, making the creatures sing along. He sighed, might as well join in since the others were clueless. Hakuna Matata, ain't no passing craze. Naruto decided to do a little dance as he continued, it means no worries, for the rest of your days. QB jumped from Appa's head and landed on the blonde's head they continued, it are problem-free, philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Aang finally decided to ask something, what's Hakuna Matata? Asking the question that was on all their minds. Yeah. It our motto. QB said with a smirk. What a motto? Aang asked. Nothing. What's a motto with you? Naruto said and slapping the kids back before the two fell over laughing and even Sokka seemed to get it because he was laughing too. Okay okay, that was a good setup, but seriously we should be making plans. Sokka said. We did make plans. Toph replied with a smile. We are all picking mini vacations. There's no time for vacations. Sokka shouted. I am learning the elements as fast as I can. I practice hard every day with Toph, Naruto, and Katara. I have been training my arrow off. Yeah, what's wrong with having a little fun in our downtime? Katara asked. Heh, all work and no play making a dull boy. Naruto commented, getting a laugh from the boy and others. Even if you do master all the elements, then what? It is not like we have a map of the Fire Nation. Should we just head west till we reach the Fire Lord's house? Saka ranted. Knock knock, hello? Fire Lord, anybody home? I don't think so. We some intelligence if we are going to win this war. Aang responded by blowing on his flute, making a gopher pop out of the hole he was standing over. Laughing, Katara said, okay, we'll finish our vacations and then we will look for Sokka's intelligence. Which made them all laugh at the boy's expense before Naruto added, or what's left of it. After she laughed, Toph thought of something. Hey Naruto, didn't you travel to the Fire Nation? She asked. He did tell that he traveled a lot and what happened that day. Naruto shook his head, I may have a grudge against the Fire Nation, but not even I am that stupid to just walk in their country alone and try and destroy them. Oh. She said with scratching the back of her neck, it's no biggie. Naruto said with a smile and somehow, she could see he was smiling, but she was not sure. It was hard for her to tell his mood nowadays. 
Back then, it was so simple, but not now. Anyway, let's go see what's the next place we have to go. As it turned out, it was Katara turn to pick their next destination. So Aang pulled out a map to let her pick. How about the Misty Palms Oasis? That sounds refreshing. Oh yeah, I've been there. It's a pristine natural ice spring and I don't usually use the word pristine. Aang said. It's one of nature's wonders. When they got there, it was in the middle of the desert and it looked like a bunch of mercs and other people ran the place because it looked like crap. Even the ice spring that must have been huge the last time that Aang had been there was now a small husk and a dog constantly licked it, which none blamed it since being in the desert was freaking hot. They go from mountain terrain to desert terrain, fun. One of nature's wonders my ass. Naruto deadpanned. Must have changed ownership since my last visit. Aang said nervously. Well, considering that was a hundred years ago, I would say, no duh. Naruto said, making Saka snicker. It seemed they had another person that was sarcastic. As soon as they walked in, the sign that was above them fell down and shattered into pieces. Naruto just shook his head as he continued to walk. Normally, he would be wearing his cloak, but since it was black and they were in the freaking desert, he decided to just wear a pair of black pants and an orange shirt. Ugh. I need to get new clothes. As they walking into a bar of sorts, a sandbender spat at Saka's feet and if Katara and Naruto hadn't stopped him, there would have been a fight. Once inside, they watched a man at the counter chop up a few fruits rapidly with two swords, which was pretty impressive as the man dumped all of that into an ice bowl. That somehow was not melting. Saka put on a thoughtful look as he said, I don't see anything wrong with getting one of those fruity beverages while we plan our strategy. As he got the fruit bowls, Aang bumped into the man who just got the fruit bowl and got everything on him. Aang blinked before saying, no worries, I clean up easily. He then used air bending to clean his clothes. The man gasped and said, you're a living relic. Well considering how old the kid is, you're not far off old guy. Naruto thought. Thanks, I try. Aang said with a smile, an air nomad, right in front of me. The man continued. I'm Professor Zay, head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. Now this caught Naruto attention as he tuned out the professor asking Aang questions about the airbenders and such. Maybe this man knew something about his time. As he thought about this, he sat down to Toph before she kicked him off the chair to use it as a stool. So the blonde just used a different chair while propping up his legs on the table and sipped his fruit bowl that Sokka got them. So, Professor, do you have a map? Ours is a little outdated and the one Naruto had was all ripped up and hand mud and other stains on it. Sokka asked. Certainly. The professor said as she laid one out on the table. Saka instantly scanned the map before complaining about it. What? No Fire Nation? Doesn't anyone have a good map of that place? Doubtful. Naruto muttered. You have made a lot of trips into the desert. Katara observed. All in vain I'm afraid. Zay said sadly. I found lost civilizations all over the Earth Kingdom, but I haven't managed to find the crown jewel. Wang Shirtong's library. You've spent years walking through the desert just to find some old guy's library? Toph asked. His library is more valuable than gold little lady. The professor continued. It is said to contain a vast collection of knowledge and knowledge he then paused for dramatic purposes before saying, is priceless. Toph had a deadpan look on her face as she said, hmm, sounds like good times. Neared. Naruto whispered to himself that only Toph caught and smirked. Oh, it is. The professor said, not catching what the blonde said, according to legend, it was built by the great knowledge spirit Wang Shirtong, with the help of his foxy knowledge seekers. Oh, so this spirit has attractive assistance, huh? No fool, he means actual foxes. Cuib commented as he popped out of Naruto's hair in his small form, making the professor gasp. Yes, I am a talking fox, get over it. And we foxes are able to get into tricky places to find things. Also with our natures, we can trick fools like Ponytail into giving up their information. Saka gained a tick mark on his head when the QB insulted his intelligence, again. Anyway, the professor continued, Wang Shirtong and his knowledge seekers collected books from all over the world and put them on display for all to read, so that we might better ourselves. If this place has books from all over the world, do you think it has information on the Fire Nation, a map maybe? Saka asked eagerly. 
I wouldn't know, but if such a thing exists, it's in Wang Shertong's library. Zai replied. Saka put on a thoughtful look before he said while pointing dramatically in the air, that settles it. Ang, I do believe it is my turn. I want to spend my vacation at the library. Ah hey, what about me and Naruto? Tof asked. When do we get to pick? You gotta work here a little longer before you're qualified for vacation time. Saka said with crossed arms while Tof humped as she slammed her bowl on the table. Naruto didn't seem all that bothered by it. He had the bowl on his face, trying to cool down. Of course, there is the matter of finding it. Zay cut in. I've made several trips into the desert and I've almost died each time. I am afraid that desert is impossible to cross. Aang, Saka, and Naruto all looked each other before Saka smirked and said, Professor, would you like see our sky bison? A sky bison. Zay shouted. You actually have one? Sand benders. Away from the sky bison. Zay commanded as he stopped them from taking Appa as they exited the bar. They watched as the sand fled by way their sand boats. Naruto rose an eyebrow. I have heard of these guys, let's just hope it is not true. While in the air, thanks to Appa, the professor crawled up to the beast's head and said, Tell me sky bison, are you the last of your kind? Roar. Yes. Oh delightful. If only I spoke his tongue. Zay spoke while rubbing the beast's head. Oh, the stories this beast could tell. Momo decided to chip in with his special brand of humor that a lemur could have. What about me? Shush chatty monkey. Zay said. Wow, Aang said as he looked at the picture of the library. Shouldn't be too hard to find a place like this out here. Ugh. Toph complained. Does this place even exist? Some say it doesn't. Zay said happily, Tof want to smack her face at that. Shouldn't you have mentioned that before? Ah. After a while of searching, Tof got back up and smirked before shouting, there it is. That made everyone look to where she was pointing before glaring at the girl. That would it sound like when one of you spots it. She said while waving her hand over her eyes, telling them once again she was blind. Naruto chuckled at that as he put his straw hat over the ice bowl that was on his head. He hated being hot. Looking over to the professor, who writing something down in his notebook. Professor, you said finding lost civilizations all over the Earth Kingdom, correct? Why yes I have. It was so fun but also very dangerous. The man said. Then have you been to the ruins of Kanoha? That caught everyone's attention, but mostly Tufts and the professors. Why are you asking him about the place you were looking for? Tof asked. Actually, I have, but it was very brief. Zay replied. I was able to see the Fire Nation's origin, such a marvel. Oh. And I made trips into the other ruins as well. Well, except for the ruins of Kiri and for some reason, that is in the Fire Nation. The origin of the Water Tribe? Naruto asked, making Katara and Sokka widen their eyes. Why yes, it is. Zay said with awe. I see you are a fellow scholar. No, I am just trying to find out about the past because, I am from that time. Please tell me. How did you get to this time period then? Zay asked with wide eyes. If I remember correctly, the spirit of the six paths sage sent me. Naruto said with a shrug, not really caring about that anymore, but he was still grateful to the man. Incredible. Zay said happily. Another living relic and one who was approached by the one who gave birth to ninjutsu which gave birth to the bending arts. Okay, now I did not know that. Naruto said. Well, it is similar to it. Kyubi stated before he looked at Zay and said, Oi and I am the great Kyubi, no Kitsune. Most interesting, Zay stated as he looked at the fox with wide eyes. So, it was true. The ancient nine or the tailed beasts did lose their power to the ones known as the Jinchuriki. This is so amazing. Yeah, amazing. Kyubi and Naruto dead pan while Tof winced. She knew from the stories that Naruto used to tell that being a Jinshuriki was not fun. Katara also seemed to pick that up as well. Tell me, what is it that you would like to know? Zay asked. Well, a few things. Naruto began. Where exactly are these ruins, including the ruin of Kumo? Where can I find the final scroll? which holds the remaining jutsu of the old world. 
Anne, what can you tell me about the Hyuga? Zay and the others blinked stupidly at what Naruto want and before Zay said, that, is something incredible. There are many back at the university that want to know some of the same things. Anyway, as for the ruins of Kumo, you have to go mountain climbing and I think one of the air bending temples is close to it, but unfortunately, that was another ruin I was not able to go to. Wait, why would you want to know about those Hyuga people? Asked Tof. Naruto smiled. It's a secret, but it will make you happy. Now that confused the girl to no end, but she let it slid, for now. Right well, the final scroll was said to be located to be in a place called Iron Country, but no one knows where that truly is anymore. But I did hear a scholar say he saw one of the foxy knowledge seekers carrying a large scroll that looked like the final scroll. So, I assume it would be in the library. Naruto sighed. So, it would seem that I am heading in the right direction. He commented. Yes, it would see so. Zay said happily before his expression grew serious. Now, for the Hyuga, you have to understand what happened in Kanoha. What do you mean? Asked Dang, now interested seeing they were talking about the origin of the Fire Nation. You seem the Fire Nation was not always as ruthless as they are now. No, they were a peaceful ninja village that thrived on the power of the friendship and civility thanks to the teachings of the first three Hokages, mostly the third Hokage. He, old man Sarutobi. Naruto smiled at the memory of the man as he took the picture he had taken from his office and handed it to the others. Wow, he looks a kind old grandfather. Katara commented with a smile, making Aang nod, but Sokka looked skeptical. Yes, yes. This man was said to be the god of shinobi and the professor for his exploits in the ninja world. Add to the fact that he had lived through three dated wars in his time is incredible. Zay gushed. However, he was old and he did choose a successor, but he was said to have died fighting the Kyubi no Kitsune. He then showed them a picture of what the fox used to look like and Sokka paled. Seriously? Oh, those were good times, when I had all my power and could sense hatred in the hearts of man that I would soon destroy. Kyubi reminisced, getting sweat drops from all present. Yes, and when he died sealing it away in a young baby, some believe it was his own child since he was such a noble person. Zay said, getting a smile from Naruto. So, the third Reed took his position for a short time before he was his killed by his rogue student, Orochimaru. At that, clenched his fist until knuckles were white and thanks to the vibrations that he was causing, Tof saw this, making her feel sad for her friend. So, when the new Hokage was chosen, they chose one of the great Hokage students, Tsunade Senju, who was the grandchild of the first Hokage. Zay continued, getting wide eyes from the group. So, while she had to deal with the village and an impending doom from a group that symbolizes the Red Dawn, she was being undermined by her council and most specifically a man that the third Hokage fought for the title of Hokage. He eventually became the last Hokage and through that act, that set Kanoha down the dark path that we see today. But what about the Hyuga? Asked Tof, now very interested. Ah, now while under the rule of Danzo, the man who succeeded Tsunade, the Hyuga clan did not like where Kanoha was headed and tried to leave. Danzo did not like that, as he saw everyone under his rule as tools and a defective tool needed to be dealt with. So, he destroyed them all. Will all but three who managed to escape with a group called the Rookie Ten. Zay seemed to think hard on what next to say. All I can say is where one of the Hyuga went, is that a girl named Hinata Hyuga went to the place of origin for the Earth Kingdom. A place called Tsuchi. And if I remember correctly, she became the head of the Bei Fong family. That does explain a lot. Naruto said as he nodded to himself before taking out a picture of the girl that he had taken from that room. One look and Katara gasped before she cut her eyes to Tof. The group grew quiet and Tof could not handle it anymore. Now what is wrong? This Hinata girl looks just like you, Tof. The girl said. What? Seriously? Tof and wished she could see the picture herself. I don't see the resemblance. Saka observed. Besides, she is why too hot. Aang wisely did not speak because Tof and Katara smacked the boy, making Naruto smirk. Yes, and it is said that she is the reason that Tsuchi changed from the cold heartless people they were in that time to the Earth Kingdom you see today. Zay said with smile. Naruto smiled, it is hard to believe one person can change so many people. He then looked to Aang. Of course, I should not be surprised since the Avatar can do it. That made Aang smile to rub the back of his head. Say professor, I have a two more questions. Alright, 
What would you like to know? Zay asked, eager to know what this inspiring young yellow-haired boy wanted. What were the other hidden villages like before they changed and what were these Red Dawn people searching for? Naruto asked. Oh, this I gotta hear, Saka said, thinking what his people used to be like. Well, the origins of the Water Tribe are not pretty to be honest. Zay said nervously, getting odd looks from the two Water Tribe teens. You see, this particular village was seen as excessively violent. They had a team called the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist that were ruthless in their missions, leaving no enemy alive. At this Saka winced. However, that is not the bad part that we uncovered. What was is that they were always in civil war, not bothering to interact with the other ninja villages until Danzo came to power. What was odd though was they were at civil war with certain people in their village. Unlike the other village that seemed to like people with Kekiai Genkai, they did not and sought ways to destroy them because of their differences and that is what caused the war amongst themselves. That's horrible. Katara all but yelled. I'll say, from what I heard, you guys are a lot better than your old selves now. Tof commented. Man, I am glad things have changed. Aang said sadly. So am I. Naruto grunted. Wait, what are Kekiai Genkai? Saka asked. They are powers that certain people had during that time. Professor Zay said. One of them was very interesting to us. It was called the Dead Bone Pulse and it let the user use their bones as weapons, like a sword or something. Saka blinked before looking at his arm before he said, Cool. Yes, and there were two that were often talked about that were in Kanoha. Zay continued. The first was the Biakugan, which let the user see in all 360 degrees. Naruto smiled, he knew he had been right about that. It seemed the Hyuga posseed this. Tof blinked at that. The second was far darker. It was the Sharingan. Some called it the Cursed Eye and it belonged to the Achiak and that was said to have been wiped out by all but two members. The older of the two being the one who did the slaughtering with an unknown alley. So, with that, the younger one was steeped in his revenge and once it was done, he felt empty inside and returned to the village he once called home, even though he betrayed it for power for his revenge. Okay, that's nuts. Saka said while Aang and Katara looked a little green. I'll say. It seemed that clan was doomed from the start. Tauf said. Some say it was. Zay said cryptically and it was the Uchiha who became Danzo's successor and the man who drove Kanoha further down into the darkness. That made everyone quiet down at that. Toph however was worried about her blonde friend. He was unusually quiet and by the vibrations he was putting out with his clenched fist, he was pissed. Seeing as this was depressing them, Zay quickly changed the subject, anyway, the origin of the air nomads is they are said to be from this desert. That made Aang whiten his eyes. Really? We are from out here? Asked Aang as he sadly looked at the desert. Yes, and the village of Suna was not a very trusting place. They were often skeptical of outsiders but they were allayed with Kanoha. Zay stated. The silence in the air was enough to tell what they were thinking. And on to Dekumo, the village of lightning. Well, to be honest, there is not much known about them other than they were a military village and they took things seriously, like strength. I do find it odd that they just disappeared. I could be possible that they left the elemental countries, not wanting to deal with the future Fire Nation. Naruto said, which got a shrug from Professor Zay. It is possible. The man said. Now, this Red Dawn were after the Jinshuriki but no one knew why exactly. It was said, however, that their leader possessed the same eyes as the great sage of the past. Interesting. Naruto said with a frown. If this leader was related to him, then why go after the other eight and then him? It did not make sense. Of course, there were other things that were uncovered as well. Zay stated. Oh, and what would that be? Tof asked. It seemed that another of the third Hokage students, Jiraiya the Toad Sage, was the teacher of the Red Dawn's leader. Naruto narrowed his eyes at that. Was this Tsunade the only student that stayed to the ideals of the third Hokage? It was also said that he was told a prophecy. The child of prophecy would decide the fate of the world. He would be its savior or destruction. That was grim thought to the gang, but Saka asked, so who was it? Some say it was the leader of the Red Dawn, but others thought he thought it was his supposed last student, the one he never got to teach. The fabled son of the fourth Hokage. 
Zay explained. Naruto gained a shocked look on his face as he fell back as he had fell off his head. And no way. He got out. What? Tofast, worried at her friend's emotional state. I am the boy that disappeared all those years ago. I am the son of the fourth Hokage. Naruto shouted. What? Sakai yelled. So, we got the Avatar and the Child of Prophecy to deal with. Oh boy. Wait, how do you know this Naruto? Katara asked. I found out when I went to the ruins of Kanoha, my old home. Naruto said as he rooted around in his pack to find a picture of his parents. Aang took one look at it and said. Wow, you look just like your dad, but I never saw those hair colors other than on you. Whoa, red is very rare, that yellow. Saka comment. Just shows you how one of a kind Naruto is. Tof said with a smirk. Naruto smiled until he gained a fearful look. Aang. Watch out. Wah. Holy crap. Aang yelled as he pulled Appa out of the way of a giant hand made out of sand that seemed to have blue veins on it. What was that? Saka freaked. Something dangerous. Naruto responded. Yes, and it would do to keep your guard up. QB stated. What do you think that was? Katara asked. Naruto and QB looked at each other and nodded. The fox then said, I believe that was Shikaku, the one-tailed demon. So, like I said, please keep your guard up because he is insane. That made them all sweat drop. Luckily, that Ganhan pushed them in the right direction because Sokka spotted a tower. Once they were there, they were depressed at first that it was not what they were looking for, but thanks to a gray fox going in the tower, they deduced that it was the library. Just underground. The library is underground? Zay cried out. My life's ambition full of sand. His mood quickly changed as he took out a small scooper. Well, time to start excavating. Actually, that won't be necessary. Tof said as she put her hand on the tower. The inside seems to be completely intact and it's huge. That fox thingy went through a window, I say we climb in up there and give it a look. Saka said before Kyuubi jumped on the boy's head. No. It is not a fox thingy boy. It is a fox. One of the only normal creatures here. The red fox complained. So, get it right genius or deal with me the fox smiled evilly as his cross grew longer, making the boy sweat and nod his head rapidly. Good boy. Tof chuckled at that before she said, I say you guys go ahead without me. You've got something against libraries? Katarar asked. I've held books before and I gotta tell you. They don't exactly do it for me. Tof said with a shrug. Oh right, sorry. Katara replied, remembering that the girl was blind. Let me know if they got something you can listen to. Tof smirked. I am going in. Naruto said, what are you going to do QB? Let's see, stay out here and be roast like a chicken or go inside where it is cool. Ugh, tough choice, but I am going to go in you fool. QB said. Should have expected that. Naruto replied with a deadpan expression. Tof, you going to be all right out here with just Appa? He asked while Aang was reassuring his large friend. Yeah, I'll be fine. Go find that weird scroll of yours. Tof said waving him off with a smirk. She was annoyed that he was worrying about her, but she was also touched. Okay then. Naruto said as he followed the other in via wall walking up the tower. Gara no Sabaku watched this all at a distance with narrowed eyes. What are you doing? You should have just let me kill them. Quaked the voice of Shikaku in his mini form. Once they landed in this world, they were no longer one and Shikaku lost most of his power. That and no one could take him seriously with his new voice. Mother, please be patient. Gara stated. I will take them on when I feel ready. Ugh. Shikako screamed as he jumped on Gara's head. Come on man. Oh. It is breathtaking. The spirits paid no expense when designing this place. Look at those beautiful buttresses. That made the boys giggle like little kids. What's funny? Nothing. Aang amended. We just like architecture. As do I. Zay stated as he looked around in wonder. Still funny though. Naruto whispered with a smirk. Saka, who heard him agreed. 
When they finally got on to a landing, Professor Zay began to gush. My word! The exquisite mosaic handiwork of this tile rendered avian. He trailed off when he noticed everyone looking at him funny, not understanding a word he was saying. Um, nice owl. Then they heard the noise of wings flapping, so they decided to hide behind a few pillars. What came was a giant black owl with a white face that was looking around for them. I know you're back there. Professor Zay, all smiles, walked out from behind the pillar and right up to the giant owl. Hello? I am Professor Zay, head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. The owl looked at him for a second before saying, you should leave the way you came, unless you want to be stuffed head of anthropology. That made the guy clutch his neck in fear. Are you the spirit who brought this library to the physical world? Saka said as they came out of Ding, hoping to change the subject before it got worse. Indeed. The owl stated. I am Wang Shir Tong, he who knows 10,000 things and you are obviously humans, which by the way are no longer permitted in my study. What do you have against humans? Ang asked. Seems to be a lot with the way he said the word. Naruto replied with his arms crossed and his hat on his back. He still had the noticeably smaller ice bowl on his head though. Oomph. Human only bother learn thing to get the edge on other humans. Like that fire bending who came to this place a few years ago, looking to destroy his enemy. Explained Wong before God in Sokka's face and asked, So, who are you looking to destroy? What? No no destroying. We're not into that. Sokka lied while waving his arms with a freaked out expression. Then why have you come here? Asked the owl spirit. Um, knowledge for knowledge's sake? If you're going to lie to an all-knowing spirit being, you should at least put some effort into it. The spirit deadpanned. I'm not lying. Saka said quickly, I am here with the avatar and he is the bridge between our worlds, he'll vouch for me. The teen said quickly while bringing said boy in front of him. Ah yeah, I'll vouch. Ang said nervously. We will not abuse the knowledge in your library good spirit. You have my word. Hmm, very well. I will let you peruse my vast collection, but one condition. To prove your worth as scholars, you have to contribute some worthwhile knowledge. The owl spirit declared. Professor Zay went first as he presented a large tomb to the owl. Please accept this tomb as a donation to your library. First edition, very nice. The owl said crisply as he took it with his wing. Katara decided to go next. I have an authentic water bending scroll. Oh oh, these illustrations are quite stylish. The owl stated as he took it. Uh, oh. I know. Aang thought before he busted out his wanted poster. I suppose that counts. It was Naruto's turn next as he walked up to the owl. Okay, how about this little thing from the old world? A scroll on chakra control exercises. The owl stared at the boy before saying. A gift from the old world from the child of prophecy himself, I am flattered. I will make use of this. What? How did you know that? Naruto asked. I'm all-knowing, remember? Oh right. Naruto said sheepishly. Oi, Wong, do I need to give you anything? I am not human. QB said as he popped out Naruto's hair. QB no Kitsun, it has been a while. The owl stated with some mirth. Enjoy your imprisonment? With my knowledge of seals, it should have been. Nerd. Kyuubi shouted, getting a chuckle from Naruto and Saka. Come on man. I know what happened and I know seals. The great owl sighed. Still the same no matter the size. No, I do not need any knowledge from you. I doubt you would be able to anyway. Saka walked up to the owl as Naruto restrained Kyuubi as the mini fox tried to attack Wong. Oh, great spirit, check this out. He said as he created a knot from string. Ta-da. The owl just stared at him. It's a special knot that counts as knowledge. You're not very bright, are you? Just like Kyuubi. Wang asked as he took the knot while Saka and Kyuubi's eyebrows twitched at the jab. Enjoy the library. The owl said as he flew off. Saka glared at the retreating form of the spirit and whispered. Bright enough to fool you. Kyuubi growled as he yelled at the retreating owl, never compare me to a human. Especially this one. Kyuubi, just give it a rest. 
Naruto deadpanned with a sigh. Ugh. One day I'll get that bastard. QB growled. So, you like flying? Toph asked her giant bison companion. There was not much else to do while she waited. The bison just scratched its face. Of course, I am more comfortable on the ground where I can see. Well, I don't see the way you do. I feel the vibrations with my feet, but this sand is so loose and shifty that it makes everything look fuzzy. Roar! Hey, not that there is anything wrong with fuzzy. Toph amended. She stayed quiet until she started talking about her adventures as a kid with Naruto. Appa had no choice but to sit and listen and even he could tell that the girl felt something for the boy. Only problem was that he was an animal, so he could not help her much. The gang was currently searching the bookcases for information. Saka would stuff anything of use into his bag. Aang was siding against one of the bookcases looking at pictures. Hey, look at these weird lion turtle things. He said as he held up the picture for them to see. Eh, I've seen weirder. Saka said as he took in book and stuffed it in his bag before walking away. Aang, did you know that you were left-handed in another life? Katara asked while looking at a book. Aang smiled as he rubbed the back of his head. I always knew I was special. He then looked around, waiting for Kyubi to make a comment but he was not there. Hey where are Naruto and Kyubi? I am not sure. Katara said thoughtfully, they might be looking for that final scroll Professor Zay was talking about. Saka was only half listening as he wandered around. He soon came upon a lone pedestal with a burnt piece of paper on it. The darkest day in Fire Nation history. It's got a date at the top but it doesn't say anything else. He said, mostly to himself as he cracked it open and took it before running off. Saka, where are you going? Ang asked, clueless to what was going on in the boy's head. I want to know what happened to the Fire Nation on their darkest day. He said. This could be promising, let's find Naruto and go see. As soon as he said that, they heard a loud crash followed by the Kyuubi's laugh. A few minutes before, where would very old world things be located? Naruto asked himself as he searched around. Who knows where that flying windbag put the damn thing? QB growled. But knowing him, he does not like war and since that knowledge is from your time and it is full of war, he probably would put it where most would think not to look. Where most would not look. Naruto thought aloud. He stopped at a bookshelf and his eyes widened when he saw the Kanova symbol on the back of some of the books. There were books with clan symbols on them as well. Naruto instantly located an Uzumaki book and a Hyuga book, along with some other random ones too red while they were flying. Taking both out and putting them in his bag for later, he never noticed a lone loose page fall from the bookcase, but the Kyubi did and said nothing. So, when Naruto stepped on it, he slipped and fell. He tried to latch on the bookcase for support, Yuti since there were not a lot of books and he weighed more, it came crashing down. Ha! You are such a klutz. QB laughed. What happened here? Katara asked in worry as Ed and the others saw the mess. Oh, Naruto just slipped a fell on a loose page, taking everything down with him. QB said with a straight face, Ugh. That was not fun. Naruto muttered before his eyes widened and he cleared away some of the books to see a strange safe. Okay. Never thought a place like this would he in here. Ha! Huh. I was right. Kyubi roared in victory. See that Wong? I am smart. While the Kyubi was gloating, that lone piece of paper that Naruto slipped on and seemed to have flown up when he did, floated down onto the safe. The moment it did, it began to glow. Naruto say the old village symbols on it, all five of them, along with very intricate seals connection them. The there was a flash of light, making them all shield their eyes. When it dissipated, they saw that the door was gone. Naruto looked inside and found a large scroll inside, about the size of the forbidden scroll. That is one big scroll. Aang replied with wide eyes. Yeah. Naruto said as he tried to open it, but to no avail. Frowning in thought, he decided to add chakra to it, but that only made it shrink in size to that of a normal scroll, making Sokka laugh a bit at that. Naruto scowled before he stowed it in his bag. He even took that odd piece of paper that unlocked the safe door, he was not sure why, but he did. Well, have you guys found anything? Yes, we came to get you. Saka said. I want to know what happened to the Fire Nation on their darkest day. 
with that they took off to where the info would be, but when they got there, the place was all burnt out. Well, now we know why Wong mentioned there was a firebender here before. QB said with wide eyes, that person must have been pissed that Ed destroyed everything on the Fire Nation. Naruto commented, that's so unfair. Saka screamed as he fell to his knees. Just when I think I am one step ahead of the Fire Nation, it turns out they beat us here a long time ago. I need to know what happened that day. Yip made them turn around to find a gray fox staring at them. QB rose a furry eyebrow but chose to stay quiet. Hello. Saka said nervously. Little weird fox guy. Saka. Sorry. Saka apologized as the fox pointed its body in a direction. Seems it is trying to assist you. Professor Zay reasoned. Um, sure. I guess I'll follow you. Saka said before they all followed the gray fox to a large circular room with a strange dial in the middle and a fake sky above. This room is a true marvel. A mechanical wonder. Zay gush as he looked around in awe. It's a planetarium that shows the heavens moving. Uh, this beautiful, but how is this supposed to help us? Asked Saka. It might show you what a certain day was like. Naruto commented. Question is, how would one do it? Is that an open-ended question? QB asked with a sly look. Oh, shut up. Naruto said. Maybe these dials represent dates and times. Katara suggested as she looked at the odd device in the middle of the room. Saka, try entering that date from the parchment you took. Shu. Katara. Now in front of the fox he is with the owl. Saka whispered and fox whimpered at that. QB grinned. So, you do have a brain. We foxes are known to be tricksters. But he was ignored as Saka and the others put in the date. It revealed that day to be a solar eclipse. It's literally the darkest day in Fire Nation history. Saka shouted. Now I get it. Something awful happened that day, I don't know what, but I do know why. Firebenders lose their fire bending on a solar eclipse. He said excited as he shook Aang, making the boy dizzy. Sorry, that makes sense. I mean, think of what the lunar eclipse at the North Pole did to the waterbenders. What did you expect? Naruto said, you're complete opposites. Right. This is huge. Katara said. The fox whined. Fine you earned it. Saka said as she tossed a piece of meat at the fox. We've had gotta get this information to the Earth King at Ba Sing Se. We wait for the next eclipse, when invade the Fire Nation when they are totally helpless. The Fire Lord is going down. Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds like fun. Naruto said before a shadow was cast over him and others looked scared. There is a giant angry owl behind me isn't there? They gave him a nod. Just great. Chapter 6. I can't believe those two morons went back to that planetarium thing while we have to keep that nerdy owl busy. QB complained. Naruto scowled. Shut up fox. They wanted to see when the next solar eclipse was so that we have the better advantage in this war. Naruto said as they ran with Katara and Momo. Yeah, but you are forgetting one important detail. The fox said seriously. Oh, and what is that? Naruto asked. I will lose my fire bending during that time and the golden fox would be useless. The small fox shouted, which gave away their position and they had to run some more. There are other ways to fight in this war. Naruto whispered as they hid behind a pillar with Katara and Momo behind another. Wong arrived in the room that they small group was in and narrowed his eyes when he saw Momo's tail popping. At least I'll have one specimen to add to my collection, although I wished with was Kyubi. Naruto growled before he got in the way of Wong's descent on Momo and Katara and threw a blast of gravity in the owl's face, veering it away from them. As they were running towards the exit, Naruto shouted to Katara, We have to get the hell out of here. Tof may be slowing the descent of the library, but she can only hold on for so long. I figured that that. Katara shouted back. I am also worried because she let go twice. Tof or Appa might be in trouble. Naruto said. Katara widened her eyes at this but didn't have time to comment because Wong was upon her, so she got ready to fight. Your water bending won't do you much go here. Wong announced. 
I've studied Southern Water Style, Northern Water Style, and even Foggy Swamp Style. Naruto saw Saka and Aang coming to get them and nodded the Water Tribe boy. The blonde sent a blast of gravity at the owl, sending him up a few feet before Saka came down and bashed the owl's head with his club like blade. That's Naruto and Saka's style. Learn it, Naruto chuckled before saying. Come on. We have to get out of this place. The blonde then jumped high in the air thanks to his chakra and gravity bending. Wait. Professor. Let's go. Saka shouted. Professor Zay, who had been near a few bookshelves, reading some tunes, looked up and smiled. I am not leaving, I can't. I spent too long trying to find this place. There's not another collection like this on earth. He then closed his eyes and inhaled deeply. I could spend an eternity here. Kyuubi, for once, kept quiet. Just go. Katara screamed. Aang took hold of the rope the others were climbing up on and quickly made his way out of the library, with Naruto and Kyuubi not far behind. As soon as she heard them landing on the sand, Toph quickly let go, letting the library fall into the ground. Aang looked around and saw that Appa was not there, something that Naruto feared. Where's Appa? Toph just shook her head sadly. No, how could you let them take Appa? Aang yelled at the blind girl, hurt that Appa was taken. Why didn't you stop them? The desert was getting windy and Naruto could tell that tensions were high. Don't blame her, Aang. Naruto snapped. She is the reason we didn't sink to the bottom of the desert. She could have come to get us. I could have helped him. Aang shouted in Naruto's face. I can hardly feel any vibrations out here. The sandbenders snuck up on me and there wasn't time for Toph shouted back before she was interrupted by the avatar. You just didn't care. Aang screamed in their faces. Neither of you do. He then points to Toph and shouted, you never liked Appa, you wanted him gone. Aang, stop it. You know Toph did all she could. She saved all our lives. Katara interjected, trying to calm the boy down so that Naruto would not hit the boy for yelling at Toph. Who is going to save our lives now? Saka said as the mini sandstorm got worse. We'll never make it out of here. That's all you ever care about, yourselves. Aang shouted as he stomped on the sand. You don't care whether Appa is okay or not. As he sat on the sand, sulking, Katara continued, we're all concerned, but we can't afford to be fighting now. Aang, not really listening, looked out onto the sandy horizon and he gained a serious and angry expression on his face. I am going after Appa. Aang. Wait. Katara shouted, but it was too late, he had already flown off. She looked on sadly as he flew away until she turned back to the group. We better start walking, we're the only people who know about the solar eclipse. We have to get the information to Ba Sing Se. As they were walking away, Saka asked, you think if we dig out the giant owl, you think he will give us a ride? Kyuubi jumped from Naruto to Saka's head and asked, oh, you mean the one that was trying to kill us? Naruto noticed that Toph looked down and said, don't blame yourself, Toph, but, it is my fault. Toph replied sadly, no, there was not much you could do. Naruto countered. I would have helped if I could have gotten them all out sooner. I felt that you were in trouble, but I didn't react fast enough. Felt? What? You think you're the only one who use earth bending to see? Naruto said with a smirk, but I thought you couldn't. Nah, I was just a slow learner when I came to that. Naruto said as they followed Katara. Besides, I had to use it to get out of places where I bit off more, I could chew. Yeah, you'll never change. Toph giggle, which made Naruto happy that he could cheer her up. Trudging through the desert, Saka was panting hard because it was way too hot. Kyuubi was on Naruto's head using his tails as a fan. This is one of the times that I wish I was still in that seal. I don't blame you. Naruto mumbled. He did not do well with extreme heat. Toph smiled, her friend was still the same, no matter how long he had been away from her, however, something seemed off. Naruto seemed a little too understanding with Aang's loss. He never actually told her much of what happened while he was gone and he mentioned something about having something against the Fire Nation. She was so in thought that she ran into Sokka while he was trying to make Momo's wings into an umbrella. Can't you watch for your Sokka said angrily before he notices who he was talking to. No. 
Tove said indignantly. Right, sorry. Saka replied while rubbing the back of his head as she passed him. As Naruto passed him, he smacked the back of his head. What was that for? Just because. Naruto said with a smirk. Katara looked at them tiredly and said, Come on guys, we have to stick together. If we sweat anymore, I don't think sticking together will be a problem. Saka said as he and Naruto's sleeves were stuck together and Toph was stuck to both of the boys. She fixed that problem easily by forcibly pushing the two away. Katara did think that all that was hilarious because the two boys tried to fight each before Toph tried to stop them and that got all of them stuck together. Toph looked to Katara and asked, Katara, can I have some water? Okay, but we have to try and conserve it. She said as she bended five small orbs of water into all of their mouths, excluding herself. Saka put on a thoughtful look as he tasted the water. We're drinking your bending water? His eyes widened, UGH. You used it on that swamp guy. It does taste swampy. Commented Toph. So that is what the odd taste is. Naruto said, I was just going to play it off as fish water. Oh, shut up, at least we go it. QB said, too tired to complain while Momo made a blah sound. I am sorry, that's all we have. Katara said, not anymore. Look. Saka said as he pointed to a random cactus before running over and slicing it, revealing that there was liquid in it. Saka wait. You should not be eating strange plants. Katara yelled to her brother as she took a hold of Toph's hand and dragged her over to her brother. Naruto shook his head as he watched Saka, Momo, and Kyuubi drink what was inside the plant, not bothering to heed Katara's words. Look, there is water trapped inside these. Saka said as he offered it to the other in the group. Dumbass. Naruto said as he walked up to them. Drinking crap like that can. Naruto bothered to finish because Saka went and drank it anyway. That is when Saka and the other two animals went loopy. Saka spewing out some crap about the water being quenchy and good. Why do I even bother? Naruto said as he held the bridge of his nose. Who let Toph on fire? Saka babbled while Momo flew in Solsis before falling down. Kyuubi was worse though because he was talking about getting with a certain two-tailed cat. Ugh. This is going to be a long trip. Naruto mumbled. Can I get some of that cactus juice? Toph asked with a smile. I don't think that is a good idea. Katara said as he put a hand on the two earth bender and lead them away. Come on, we have to find Aang. After a few seconds of Sokka staring at the sky, Katara ran back to get him. How did we get out here in the middle of the ocean? Sokka suddenly asked, making his sister sigh. Naruto put on an evil smirk. Oh, it was Wong, that giant owl chased us to a magical portal. Whoa! Sokka yelled, making Toph giggle. But that turned into full blown laughter as Kyuubi started singing the sailor song. Naruto, not seeing any harm in it, sang along. They all sang as the song started. So, if we all come together, we know what to do. We all come together, just say we love you. And if we all come together, we know what to do. We all come together just for you. It was then that Naruto very crudely used his earth bending on the sand to create a cannon, and its occupant was the fox. However, when the blonde tried to shoot it off, it just exploded, but it did the intended job and sent Kyuubi into a dune, erecting a scream from the fox. Katara wanted to smack her head at all the stupidity she was seeing. However, she was surprised when Toph began to sing along. She blamed all this insanity on the heat, racing all around the seven seas, chasing all the girls and making robberies, causing panic everywhere they go. Party hardy on Titanic. Saka butted in as he was jumping around. Sailing, sailing, jumping off the railing. He took another random cactus and drank the liquid. Drinking, drinking, till the ship is sinking. The both the boys jumped in, gambling, stealing, lots of sex appealing. Come, let us sing the sailor song. Toph continued, before everyone but Katara joined in. So, if we all come together, we know what to do. We all come together, just say we love you. And if we all come together, we know what to do. We all come together just for you. Toph jumped in again as her hip bumped the blonde. Sailor man, you really turn me on. Now the guys are gone, come let us get it on. Girls like me are really hard to find. So, if you go, I'll kick your hiney. 
Saka and Naruto jumped in once again. Sailing, sailing, jumping off the railing. Drinking, drinking, till the ship is sinking. Gambling, stealing, lots of sex appealing. Come let us sing the sailor song. Toph sang. Finally, Katara could not take it anymore and shouted. Stop. Come on. We have to find Aang, Naruto shrugged. Sorry, just trying to lighten the mood. As they walked away, Saka was still singing the song, but it was bad and a giant mushroom cloud made of sand rose up behind them. What is that? Katara asked. What? What is what? Asked Tov, oblivious to it all. It is a giant mushroom. Saka said with awe as he threw his arms in the air. Maybe it is friendly. No, it is just a pissed off avatar. Naruto said with a sigh. Come on, let's just go. Sighed Katara as she took Tov's hand while Saka went on and on about the large mushroom cloud before Naruto dragged him and Momo away. The desert was entering twilight now and things were starting to get cold. The avatar and still not returned to his group and that was just fine with Gara. The Sandman noticed that the blonde had put on his Akatsuki cloak and narrowed his eyes. Shikaku saw this and smirked evilly. Is it time? It is time. Gara said stoically as he lifted his hand, making sand float in the air before it turned into sharp daggers. As they flew off, Shikaku grew wide-eyed with bloodlust as he watched the daggers fly toward their enemy. It is about damn time. Naruto had been sensing that someone had been watching them for a long time now. Ever since they entered the desert and now, they were revealing themselves. His eyes cut to the sky and saw the airbender coming for them in the distance. So just as the avatar touched down with a sour expression on his face, he was shocked to see Naruto running at him before knocking on his back with his boot. Before Aang or anyone else could ask why he did that, Naruto revealed his craws out of his sleeves before slashing in the air. A few things flew off in different directions, but one landed a few feet from Aang's head. He saw that it was a dagger made out of sand before it fell apart. Looking back to Naruto, he said as he took the blonde's offered hand. You saved me? What are friends for? Naruto said with a smirk. But even you should keep aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Aang mumbled with rubbing the back of his head. But who is attacking us? We're about to find out Aang. Naruto said as they all heard a creepy yet annoying voice that sounded high-pitched. Rip. Slaughter. Devour your enemies. It is the only way to serve of. It yelled, creeping them all out except for Kyuubi, who just looked on with a bored expression. He had gotten over his juice high a few hours ago, unlike Saka. Okay, there is only one idiot who would say things like that. QB drawled. Shikaku, what the hell are you doing here? Shikaku, in all his small glory, popped out of the sand and shouted, I am here to destroy you. Oh, and how do you suppose to do that? You were always the weakest of the nine and now that we are in this time, our power is diminished by a lot. QB said, Oh, I am not alone. I have my Jinchuriki. The same Tanuki shouted. Gara. Hurry the hell up. Yes, mother. A flat monotonous voice called out as he sand shunshined in front of them all. Katara was instantly freaked out by his dead expression. I am not you, mother. The raccoon screamed. This made the group wonder if the duo in front of them were sane. Ignoring the raccoon, Gara shifted his gaze to Naruto. So, the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune is before me at last. I was sent to take you back to the past. He scoffed at that. Even I know that the ring-eyed man's words were fake. He and his group captured the rest of us for a reason, but when he found out that you were not among us, he sent all of us to find you. Naruto's eyes widened at that. He sent, the other eight after me. Correct, and once we do, we are to go back, but I have other plans. Gara said, getting a confused look off the blonde. I would rather prove my existence with you, what do you mean? Naruto said cautiously, not liking the growing insanity in the redhead's eyes. I will kill you to prove my existence. You and the Avatar. Screamed Gara with an insane smile. This statement got them all into gear, even Tof, who could not fight so well in this environment. Naruto just stood there and said, no. Prove your existence another way. No? No. Gara screamed. There is no other way. 
I kill to prove my existence in the old time, and now this time. I fight for only myself. I love only myself. Naruto sighed sadly, is that what you resorted to? He asked with sadness before his eyes grew serious, off-putting Gara a bit. I will show you that you are wrong. I fight to protect my friends. If you have someone to fight for, that is when you truly become strong. The blonde's friends all smiled at that. Gara seemed to consider this, before his face grew more insane. Let's test that then. Gara made a few signals with his hands before the sand exploded all around them before twisting in on itself and capturing Top. The sand rose high into the air, forming a pillar. The at the top, Toph was restrained in a circular construct, with all of her limbs bound so that she could not bend her way out. Defeat me, and she lives. If you don't, she will slowly be crushed. Sand began to rise and form an orb around Toph. Tov. Naruto shouted. Seeing Toph in danger, it brought out Naruto's protectiveness of the girl. Hang on, don't worry about me. Toph shouted, just kick his ass. Naruto nodded, not that she could see. Aang walked up to help Naruto, but the blonde just held out his arm to stop the avatar. Sorry Aang, but this is my battle. Just help Katara make sure Sokka doesn't do anything. Are you sure? Aang asked, worried for his friend. Dead. Naruto replied, making Aang reluctantly nod his head before returning back to the others. Naruto began a mental countdown of what he could currently do. My earth bending pretty much sucks out here. Although sand bending is just another branch of earth bending, so I should try and learn that later. Right now, I have one chakra bending technique, my gravity bending, and my lightning bending. This should be fun. Gara, tired of waiting to fight, screamed, time to die. With that, the sand exploded all around the red head, revealing huge strands of sand, swirling the air. Saka, still under the influence, widened his eyes and shouted, Octopus. Ignoring the random outburst, Naruto looked at all the swirling sand in the air as Gara and Shikaku rose into the middle of it all. Okay, this is going to be harder than I though. He didn't have time to think much on it because a large strand slammed down on the spot, he was just in. Thanks to his quick reflexes, Naruto jumped away just in time before he took a chance and ran up the strand of sand, heading straight for Gara. Gara narrowed his eyes at the blonde before he sent a few more strands of sand at the blonde. Naruto growled before he ran at the incoming strands and jumped off the one he was on just as the other crashed into it. He then brought out his hook swords to swing around one of them and landing on another before repeating the process two more times, annoying the raccoon boy. Toph could not see anything like her friends, but this structure she was in let her see what she was in. The sand was solid enough that it let her seize. Her range was widened as well since this structure was connected under all the sand to the structure Naruto was in. So, she was able to see her longtime friend fight for her. For some reason, she could barely see Aang and the others. As he watched the battle between her best friend and this nut job, she silently rooted for this battle to be over soon. Suddenly the sphere around her closed in a bit, scaring the crap out of her. Come on Naruto, I know you can do it. Naruto heard the sphere and was momentarily distracted because the sand strand sharpened to spear points before shooting at the blonde. Naruto reacted quick enough to put his hook swords away and bring out his claw as he slashed them to pieces. However, one got in his guard and sliced into his shoulder. Ack, we have to help him. Katara shouted. I know, but he does want it. Aang said sadly. I think he is trying to prove something. What? About which way of fighting is better? Yes. Aang said as he watched Naruto pulled the sand spike out of his shoulder. Naruto growled, but he was thankful he had a fast healing factor. He then looked to the dry sky and growled again. If he wanted to do any of his high level attack for lightning bending, so, he did the only thing he could think of. He bent his bioelectricity into a bright ball of energy before shooting it off into the sky where a lone cloud resided. Gara saw this and laughed. QB sighed and said, Well, this should be interesting. What? Why? Asked Katara not understand what Naruto was doing. And why are you not up there with him? I don't feel like fighting. Was QB's simple answer. Besides, he doesn't need my help to defeat the one tail. Now that lightning ball he shot up was to bring out his more dangerous lightning-based attacks. They saw the small cloud get a lot bigger and darker. 
What is first? Gara was now wiry what that the ball did. Something was going in the air that was not normal for desert conditions, even at night. What are you doing? The sandman shouted as he converted a good amount of his sand into spears and sent them at the blonde. Naruto eyes, which seemed to emit sparks of lightning, glowed with mirth in this new darkness as he back flipped into the air before he used his claws to slash the spears to pieces while lightning arced from his body to his claws and then into the air, creating a brilliant lightning show. He then used the lightning to shoot off towards Gara, intending on impaling him. But the sand user was prepared, albeit barely. While floating on his sand platform, the surrounding sand moved in on him to protect the red head from the lightning. The sand turned to glass before falling to the ground. Shikaku, who had white eyes, said, I think we should combine. No. Said a voice behind them. The duo whirled around on their sand platform to see Naruto, using gravity bending, to float in the air. The blonde held out a hand and shot a blast of dense gravity at Gara. It was pretty powerful as it knocked Gara off his feet, sending him to the ground, but the sand that Shikaku was controlling caught him. Naruto looked to the clouds to see that they were not yet ready. So, he did the next best thing. He channeled lightning to his fingers and held them like Goku does to get ready for his attack. Naruto then spun in place before releasing the spun and pent up energy. The result was a large tornado made of lightning. Take my ionic vortex. The vortex ripped through all the sand before it spun Gara around and then threw him into a sand dune. Gara got back up and stared at Naruto with a cracked face before all the sand on his fell off. You are very interesting, Uzumaki. Gara just nodded to Shikaku before the small creature disappeared into his chest. Gara then closed and opened his eyes to reveal the stared eyes of the Shikaku. Now I am in control. With that, Gara's body floated into the air as well as a lot of sand before it converged on him, forming a sphere of sand before more sand came to form the raccoon's giant body, creating terrifying sight to those watching. Naruto glared heatedly. This is not what he wanted. Glancing at the sphere around Toph was getting smaller and then meant he needed to hurry up. However, he could not think much because Shikaku and banged on his stomach, sending out his drilling air bullet that made Aang's eyes widen. Naruto glared at it before he brought his hand down in a chopping motion, sending condensed gravity at the airball to slice it in half, sending each piece to his side. However, the wave kept on traveling and sliced off the sand head of Shikaku. Okay. Now I am mad. A voice rang out before the head reconstructed itself. The face smirked before saying. I will enjoy killing you. He shouted before shooting off five more of those drilling air bullets but Naruto used gravity bending to jump high in the air and keep on climbing to dodge the attacks. Naruto saw that the clouds were ready, so he let them loose. The group's eyes widened as lightning began to dance violently across the sky. Oh! Shiny lights! Saka randomly shouted. You dare to kill me and kill my friends. Naruto's voice rang out. I cannot allow this. Naruto looked up at all the lightning and smirked. All this power that bring this lightning down from the lightning from the heaven and I am just directing it. Begone with the roar of thunder. The blonde shot a bolt of lightning to the clouds, which brought down a large Chinese-style dragon that circled the sand demon before rising back into the clouds and gave the sand demon a menacing glare. Mother Fu Shikaku screamed out before he was cut off by a large roar and everything around Shikaku went up in a brilliant flash. The gang had to cover their eyes because it was too bright for them. They did notice that Ekans struck holding Toph began to fall apart. Using quick thinking, Aang used his air bending skills to bring Toph safely to them. They were surprised that Toph had tears in her eyes, but they said nothing. Is he okay? Toph weakly asked. Yeah, I think so, Katara said, he used some huge lightning attack to bring the guy down. However, when the dust cleared, they gasped at the new sight in front of them. The land had gone from sand to glass and most of Shikaku's sand body was glass as well. The only thing that was not fully glass was the sphere that held Gara's body. The sphere was singed and cracked all over and Gara pushed a piece off so that he could get out. If one looked close enough, Gara had to different eyes. His own and Shikaku's. He suddenly looked up and saw Naruto coming for him I win. When Naruto shouted that, the sucker punched Gara, forcing Shikaku out of Gara. They landed a few feet away on the glass painfully. Gara looked up when he heard tapping and saw Naruto slowly walking towards him. No. No. Get away. My existence will not be erased. 
Naruto looked tiredly at his red-haired opponent. That attack Kirin was usually a widespread attack that used against the Fire Nation when he could not use his golden fox form. It usually drained a lot out of him and usually killed Fire Nation soldiers so they could not get word out that he used lightning. So it was extra straining to keep all that power to one spot and not let it get to his friends, especially Tof. Shut up. Naruto said weakly. I am not going to kill you. I just proved that my way is better. I know the pain you went through, all Jinshuriki know that pain. I choose to go my way and you yours. I see. Gara said after a minute with calm and dead voice. Yet I have no one to protect. You have me, I am willing to be your friend. And the fact that you still have family back in the past helps as well. Naruto replied. When you get well enough, look for the ruins of your village and you will see what I mean. After that, come look for me and the others. I am sure the other would like to screw over the ring-eyed man as well. Very well. Gara replied before he fell asleep, glad that his demon was not in him anymore. Naruto sighed as he trudged back over to his group and said, well, that was tiring. I'll say. Aang shouted. That last attack was insane. Such pretty lights. Saka said with a goofy smile. You are a real powerful bender. Katara was put off by that, remembering the fortune teller's words. Why yeah. It was amazing. I am glad. Naruto said with a tired smile. If Tof okay? Of course, I am. Tof shouted as she gave him a big huge, which he returned forcefully. Katara smiled at that b she said, come on, we still have to get out of here. She said before she took Tof's hand and made the others do the same as they made their way through the desert, even though they were all tired. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfiction. Looking forward to having you on board again.